In international news, Australian billionaires confirm plans for a second Titanic. National, comic relief, how much is being raised and what have we done to help? In local news, we've recently done a joint production with the Boys School of South Pacific. In entertainment, we interview upcoming sensation Sam Callahan. In education, a school aims to be practically paperless. In sports, over 600 matches have been fixed. Find out more later on. And now to national with Steph. Plans to build a second Titanic are well underway. The Australia billionaire Clive Palmer announced this in April 2012. The ship is being designed to be as similar as the original Titanic as possible, but safety-wise there will be some major changes. It will be built in China and will hopefully set sail in 2016. Clive Palmer says around 40,000 people have already applied to be on the first voyage. With plans for the replica to travel along the same route as the original Titanic, from the UK to America, many people hope this time it will reach its destination. We will have to wait and see though. And now to Alicia with Education News. This is Avenue News New York, a state-of-the-art world school and integrated learning community where every pupil is armed with an iPad from the age of seven. Half the subjects are taught in either Mandarin or Spanish. And if necessary, you can attend class virtually from your sick bed. For the future, Avenue plans to open over 20 schools around the world, exactly like this one. It has the highest number of applications in the history of the city, even though it's only been open five months. It already has over 1,600 pupils. And one of those is rumoured to be Surrey Cruz. Avenue's aims for its students to be trilingual by the time they leave, so in the language aspects, it's fairly similar to our own school. But Avenue's main objective is to be a nearly paperless school. It has nearly 5,000 digital devices, and every pupil has at least one. However, the question is, will Avenues continue to be a shining star for technology and education, or will it fail and fade? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now for a short report on comic relief with Steph. This year for Comic Relief, Russell Brand hosted a show called Give It Up Comic Relief on the 6th of March. It was a mix of laugh out loud comedy and music. Many famous comedians performed some hilarious sketches and pop stars performed some of their greatest hits. For music, there was Emily Sande, Jake Bug, Jesse J, Kasabian, Nicole Scherzinger, Noel Gallagher, Paloma Faith and Rizzle Kicks. And the comedians were Doc Brown, Eddie Izzard, Frankie Boyle, Jason Manford, Jimmy Carr, Noel Fielding and Simon Amstel. It looked like a pretty good lineup. The show is in memory of Amy Winehouse, the beloved singer who passed away aged 27 in June 2011. They raised a lot of money for their charity who is focusing on helping people with addictions. Finally, Let's Dance for Comet Relief, where celebrities put on their dancing shoes. A lot of money was raised for Comet Relief this year. It turns out the total so far is over 75 million. We also did our bit to raise funds for Comet Relief by hosting a concert for the boy band Tyree Lark. All the money raised went to Comet Relief. We managed to catch up with them to have a chat.
Bill Suit did um, the Liverpool Sound City, which I've played quite a bit with them, yeah, competition there. So, just got to plug that in on there, see the camera. It's all good fun. So, what are your ambitions for the next couple of years? Uh, we're going to get um, an EP out, get recording, and then um, we'll plug it to some labels and tour the world. So, we'll Should you get there as a club before? I'm definitely more nervous now than I am. I didn't really say that. He's got a We'll be teaming up with Royal Grammar School for Boys yet again to make a joint school production. This year's production is a remake of the world famous musical South Pacific. We will now be speaking to Head of Drama, Jeff Hind, MBA, for more information. Uh, why did you choose uh, South Pacific as this year's production? Um, I wanted to choose something different from last year, a different sort of musical. Last year we did um, uh, We Will Rock You, which is what we call um, a jukebox. Musical, in other words, is based on pop songs, which are then put together in a narrative. This is a proper musical uh, and a famous musical, and it's by a, a team called Rodgers and Hammerstein, who are the sort of Shakespeare of musicals, like set in motion, you know, the modern musicals that, that you see today. So I wanted to try something like uh, uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein, um, and I thought I had the cast for it, which I do. Um, so it's, it's suited the, the people that were going to be involved in. Do you have a favourite scene? A favourite scene? I have to be careful what I say here with all the cast here. Um, I guess, um, favourite scene, that's an interesting question. Um, no, I don't really have a favourite scene because I, I enjoy the, the whole thing really. I guess the climax of the play is, is the best scene because that's where everything gets resolved. But I can't tell you what that is because it would give the end of the show. Um, have the cast been easy to work with? Yeah, very easy. They're very talented. Um, they're great singers and actors. We've got a great team of principals. Um, and the girls' school have provided us again, again with, a, with a team of great girls who uh, are good dancers, good singers. And yeah, it's been a fun show. Because I, <coughs> I thought, because it's a sort of old fashioned sort of show, you know, about 40 years old, it might take a bit of time for them to adjust to that sort of. Uh, type of show, but they've actually um, responded to it very well, very talented. Yeah. And our last one, what's your favourite song? My favourite song? Um, well, it's actually not one of the big ones. Everyone knows every If you know South Pacific, or your mum and dad knows South Pacific, they'll know every song in it. But the one that happens to be my favourite is not one of the well-known ones. It's called You've Got to Be Carefully Taught, which is, a, which is like an anti-racist song uh, about how people aren't born racist, they are taught to be racist by their upbringing and background, etc. It's quite a, it's a very, very strong, powerful song, and that happens to be my favourite song, even though there are lots of lovely, lush, romantic songs in it, which I could have chosen. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, and I hope you're going to come in to see it. Yeah. There is a new teenage singing sensation arriving on the music scene, and here at Royal Grammar School for Girls, we've had the pleasure to listen to his name is Sam Callahan, and with his new single, Runaway Train, he is set to top the charts in 2013. After starting out in a band managed by Spice Girl, Jerry Hallowell, he left to focus on his solo career. We have managed to get hold of him for a short interview. And I, I think uh, the fact that I wasn't, I wasn't very good at any academics and stuff like that. Um, I was never good in, in school at maths and English and stuff. Um, so it was something else. It was something that I could do, and I, I kind of focused on what I could do rather than the things I couldn't. And are you nervous before performances? 
sometimes, so I think I, I get more nervous when it's a small crowd. When it's a big yeah. crowd, I can just sort of jump right into it. It's the intimacy. Yeah, it's good. What was it like to have Jennifer Callaway as a manager? Uh, um, she's great. She, it's it's difficult because because she, she's obviously very um, you respect her and, and for what she can do in the, in the industry, and she's done some amazing things. Um, but. It just, in the end, the band just wasn't going in the, in the direction that we'd hoped it would be. Um, but yeah, no, she's a really lovely girl, and you can have a right laugh with her, so that's cool. Have you got any tips for aspiring singers? Go for it. There is, there's nothing like bigger that, that you can say to someone who's trying to get out there like myself than, than really just go for it, because I'm, I'm, the only way I know that I'm going to get out there is that I'm just going to give it every single thing that I've got. And if, if I didn't, then there'd be no hope, so just smash it. <laughs> When did you first start singing professionally? Um, I still don't regard myself as professional. I don't think you kind of ever do. If you're, if, you kind of, you start. Um, there's no difference between what I was doing when I was eight years old to what I'm doing now. It's just that I've kind of got further in, in my career and more people know who I am, um, which is amazing. But but yeah, so I, I don't know. You kind of just, it's it's like anything. It's like growing up. You you grow as a singer as you grow up as a as a person. And who are your musical influences? Oh, this is, see, this is difficult because it's for different things, like for, for writing, um, I love people like Ed Sheeran and the script, um, because the, the lyrics are just amazing. Um, but then you look at people like Robin Williams um, and Will Fly, actually, uh, and Justin Bieber, just on stage, just amazing entertainers and, uh, entertainers and showmen, just absolutely brilliant. There's no one better. <laughs> I think people have said you look a bit like Justin Bieber as well. Oh, that's probably the hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how do you deal with bullies? We heard you had a book. Yeah, at the time, you know what, I wasn't very good um, at, at dealing with it, um, and like, because no one is, you, you don't sort of prepare yourself for that, um, but I think that, oh, like, the, 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 the victim always kind of comes out on top, the better person always comes out on top, so you just, you just sort of got to grit your teeth and, and take some of it, but you've got to stand up for yourself, I really believe in stand up for yourself. And do you have any messages for your fans? Um, I mean that I love them and keep doing what you're doing um, because it's going amazingly and it can only get better. And now we've got some questions from the audience today. Oh, okay. wicked. So, um, where do you see yourself in the next 12 weeks? Let's see, this is for, for the last, literally for the last two or three months. So, so much, um, so many amazing things have happened that we really didn't expect to happen. Um, so, I'm guessing, you know, just just from, from that, that there's gonna, it's only going to happen again and there's going to be some amazing unexpected things but I know that um, we have some really exciting things um, planned out like uh, I'm recording an album, um, I've got some massive uh, gigs that I'm really excited about um, so yeah, so look out. Can you out. tell us about any of that? Any of your upcoming gigs or the secret? The bigger ones I'm not allowed to um, but I've got, we're in talks with, with Radio 1 um, and some festivals so that's about all I can say. <laughs> um, are you single? Yes. <laughs> How do you keep fit? Uh, I go to the gym quite a lot. Um, I spend it, it's it's quite quite hard because I spend a lot of time on the road, and then you just sort of obviously you don't get much time to to, to keep fit to go running or uh, go down the gym. But then uh, when I'm home, because um, you, you do get also a lot of time at home, like it's either you're home for ages or you're on the road for ages. And when I'm at home, I, I do take quite a lot of time doing sort of, I go running, I play football, go down the gym. So. Who do you support? West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> do you know Joey Essex or Amy Charles? Well, personally. Yes, I think so. No, um, <laughs> no uh, Essex is quite a big place. But I know a lot of people who do know them. I think just from the music circuit, like it's kind of the entertainment business. But yeah. How was it having... Uh, how is it touring with District 3? Uh, like old times, because I've been friends with them since I was about 8 years old. Um, so it was it was amazing because it was like old times, but at the same time, everyone knew who they were. And like, obviously quite a few people knew who I was, but um, especially for them. Um, and there was amazing crowds, and it was just, it was it was something that I don't think many people get to experience, to do that sort of thing with like three of the best mates. Um, so that's really, really cool. Okay, thank you. Thank Hello, you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. It's wicked. Bye. <laughs>
Investigators say 680 matches have been fixed, including the Championship League game, which they are not allowed to mention. An organised crime syndicate based in Asia has been coordinating the operations. Around 425 match officials, club officials, players and criminals are expected to be involved. Investigations continue and we'll have more new news later. And now to the weather with Becky. Hello. Well, it's been a very frosty start to the day, so a few of you might have had to scrape the windscreens first thing this morning. However, the good news is it should be a dry day for most of us, with blue skies and sunshine hopefully showing a glimpse of the spring weather to come. Mind you, it'll still feel cold for the end of March, especially as it turns windy later, but here's hoping it's the end of it. The bad news is that it'll turn wet across Northern Ireland, Wales and South West England later in the day to get your umbrellas ready. And the outlook for tomorrow is more snow, so expect some free rows. That's all for now. Back to the studio. And now to Amy with the celebrity birthday messages. This day, 24 years ago, the singer-songwriter and producer Labyrinth, or known by his family as Timothy McKenzie, was born in Hackney, London. The artist was signed to Simon Cowell's label Psycho in 2010 and has since become one of Britain's most successful artists in recent years. Some career highlights include his singles Pass Out with Tiny Temper and Beneath Your Beautiful with Emily Sandé, both reaching number one, and also performing at the Olympic Torch Festival. We are sure there are even more great things to come. But not only is it Labyrinth's 24th birthday, but also Michelle Humes, a member of the popular girl band The Saturdays, and also the wife of Marvin Humes of JLS. Her and Marvin are even expecting their first child together soon. Michelle's career highlights include being a member of S Club 8 with one of her current band members, Frankie Sanford, appearing regularly in children's musical comedy show I Dream, also with Frankie, and having 11 singles within the top 10 of the Saturdays. We at Will and News wish her and Labyrinth a very happy birthday. That's all from us at Royal Grammar School for Girls. Thank you and goodbye.